If you have ever met an infectious person, you truly understand what it is to have met Peter and John that afternoon at the Gate Beautiful. Often, we are taking or talking purely about emotions when we speak of an infectious personality. But when the Holy Spirit comes on the scene, there is an outbreak of faith, power, and the environment changes. So I want to look at, again. Uh, we talked last week about Acts three. I wanted we we looked at verses one through six. Now I want to look at verses seven through twenty six. I'm going to focus on the first part of that primarily, but I want to look at that. So you know, catching us back up, this lame man who is brought every day to the gate, beautiful, laying there. He's going to ask of alms or compassion. He sees Peter and John, detains him by asking for alms, and Peter looks on him and says look on us or expect from us and it says he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them and peter said silver and gold have i none but such as i have give i thee and in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk and that's where we left off last week so the miracle spreads verse 7 says and he took him by that right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. <clears throat> it says he took him by the right hand, the right hand, the hand of power. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. In other words, he rose him up. He rise up. And again, that ties to this idea of waken or collect one's faculties. So verse 6, he tells him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, <clears throat> rise up and walk and collect yourself. Walk, we talked last week about walk being this idea of, of trampling down or um, showing proof of the ability, right? And it says he reaches down, grabs him by the right hand, and lifts him up, rises him up. In other words, he wakens him up. He helps him collect his faculties. We might say, wow, that's pretty bold. And we talked about that last week, too, how the Holy Spirit comes upon you and gives you a boldness. But he rises him up, lifts him up, and immediately, when? Immediately. In the twinkling of an eye, in an instant, he'll never be the same again. In that instant, his feet, his ankles, are strengthened. That's what it says. It says, immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. They were established. What are these? These are the things that are our foundation. Your feet and your ankles are the foundation on which you stand. <clears throat> so immediately, when he says, wake up, pay attention, wake up, stand up, you're going to show proof, rise up and walk. Immediately, feet and ankles strengthened, established. Now, remember I said he had an expectation. He expected he was going to receive from them. That's what verse uh, 5 tells us. Expecting to receive something of them. Now, here we are in verse 7. Lifts him up. Immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Expectation delivered received strength where have we seen that word well i told you we saw it in verse five they were expecting something see our faith gives us an expectation our faith gives us the expectation that we shall receive something we're trying to work this out and in, in, in understanding miracles Several things have happened in this story. Peter's walking by, probably someone he's walked by a, a gazillion times. The guy asks him for something. Peter actually looks on him, takes notice. How many times do we go through life, we don't stop and take notice of the needs around us. God, I just ask that you'd open our eyes to see the needs people have. But he has a boldness. It, it comes from the Holy Spirit within him and and. and that boldness tells him, hey, look at us, because something's about to happen. He creates that, or creates that 
expectation. The man's expecting to receive something, and all of a sudden, he, he tells him, I don't have what you think I have, but what I do have, I'm going to give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up, wake up, walk, show your ability. And then he reaches down and he takes a physical action, reaches down, grabs a hold of him, helps him collect himself, <clears throat> wakens him up, and immediately, immediately, his foundation is established and he receives strength. And it says, verse 8, and he, meaning the lame man, leaping up, leaping up, leaping up, leaping is from, from a point of origin to jump, to gush, like with excitement, leaping up, stood. This word stood here means established again. <clears throat> I said immediately he was strengthened. Immediately his foundation was established. Now he stands. He's established. Leaping up, stood and walked, walked again, demonstrating his ability to tread upon. You know, the enemy wants to keep you pressed down. He wants to keep you lame. He wants to keep you in that position of poverty, if you will. Looking for compassion always, something. But here he is established, and now he begins to tread upon. He begins to show his ability to tread upon. That weakness, that lack is being crushed under his feet. Why? Because he's received and he's been strengthened, and he's gotten what he needed maybe not exactly what he expected but he had an expectation of something this is god going above and beyond our simple expectations to his own plan and it says that he stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple now he entered into the temple with them. If we look all the way back, <clears throat> verse 3 says, who is seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple? If we look at verse 1, it says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple. In other words, Peter and John were part of this established church experience. He was on the outside. He was on the outside at the gate beautiful. Now he's part of the team. He's part of the group going in. He's included. The relationship has changed. He's on his way in with them. So it says, and entered with them into the temple, walking, already talked about that, walking and leaping and praising God. He's, he knows where his healing came from. He's walking and leaping and praising God. giving glory to God, giving recognition to God. And verse 9 says, And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. This is the point where the lame man becomes infectious. See, Peter and John were contagious last week because they, they spread to him an expectation to receive. It came from the Holy Spirit. It came from God. Through Peter, that boldness, expect something. Okay. Now he has his healing. And he's jumping. He's leaping. He's praising God. He's walking. He's showing his ability. And he's giving glory to God. And at that point, 
he becomes infectious because it says all the people saw. You ever been around an infectious person? I'm not talking about someone with the flu. Have you ever been around somebody that just, I mean, just being around them makes you smile? Just being around, around them gives you new hope? Just being around them makes you just feel good all over? Yeah, man, I, I, I really enjoy that person's company. See, they all the people saw him. They saw him jumping and so excited, and obviously he's not lame anymore. I mean, Wow. And, and it says that they saw him walking, proving that he could do it, <clears throat> treading upon those things. And they saw him leaping and they, they saw him praising God, giving God the glory. And it says they knew that it was him that was set at the gate beautiful of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and and amazement. Pastor Steve talked a few weeks ago about being stupefied. Well, that's what wonder and amazement here means. It means they were stupefied. They were like, what? I mean, like dumbstruck. Right? They saw this and they're like, what? They knew his story. This, this was the lame guy. He was always sitting out there lame. <clears throat> There's people who know you and they know the things that you deal with and the problems that you have. And when God changes your everything, they'll go, well, isn't that the, isn't that the person that had an addiction problem? Well, wait, 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 isn't that the person that was always a total downer, really depressed and everything? Isn't that the person that was just really angry all the time? Isn't that the person that was just wild? But see, God changes your everything. The Bible tells us that you become a new creation. Right? He can fix what's wrong. We talked about the relationship side of things. He now has a relationship he didn't have before. To Jesus Christ. These people are stupefied. Wonder and amazement. That's what they've got going. They're just, wow. Seriously, this, I mean, don't even know what to say. And then it says, and as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John hanging on to him. He's not hanging on to him because he's afraid of falling down. He's hanging on to him because he, he wants to stay close to these guys. They gave him the greatest gift when they said silver and gold have I none but such as I have that expectation I'm going to give it to you that faith I'm going to give it to you that relationship we're going to hand you that right now and it turned out to be everything he had ever needed or hoped for and so it says he held to Peter and John and all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's Greatly wondering, still stupefied. Just, they run over there. Oh, my goodness, what is going on? And then I, I wrote people, people, people. Which is a movie reference if, uh, if you get it. <laughs> but um, verse 12 is very key. There's all these people gathered, wondering, stupefied by what they've seen. They know it's a miracle. Verse 12 says, and when Peter saw it, saw what? When Peter saw the wonder and the amazement, when he saw them seeing this man giving glory to God, when he saw that there was an opportunity to share with them the reason for the miracle. When Peter saw that, it says, he answered unto the people. And you're like, well, where's the question? Now it was on their faces. Peter answered. Peter made the statement because he knew there was a question that hadn't even been asked yet. They're, they're standing there going, what has gone on? 
Peter's like, ah, I'm glad you asked that. And even though you didn't, you should have. And he starts to explain it to him. It says, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look at ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or, or holiness we have made this man to walk? He's taking the credit away from him and putting it where it belongs with Jesus Christ. Why are you looking at us? Unfortunately, in today's world, we have too many people in churches that want you to look at them. Instead of saying, why are you looking at me? It's God. That's the answer. Peter's, don't look at us. Look at God. And he goes on, and I'm going to sort of move quickly through this. Why look so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac. Sorry, I lost my place there. Uh, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead. Wherefore, we are witnesses. He's kind of given him a little bit of grief here. Rightly so. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So he's giving God all the glory for what's gone on. In fact, what he's saying is, Jesus made me do it. He's saying, God did it. It's all about God. That's what he's telling him. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. He's telling them, hey, I, I, hey you were stupid, I get it. Well, or ignorant. They are different. But he's kind of giving them a, a, a little bit of, um, shall we say, grace right there. But those things which God beforehand had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Now, this is really key. He says, repent ye, therefore, and be converted. That you, your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which god has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began for moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the lord your god rise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever ye shall say he shall say unto you and it shall come to pass that every soul which shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people Yea, and the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall the kindred of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Now, I read a lot of scripture there, but I want to go back and hit the, the parts that I want you to get today. He said, repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. We're talking about miracles. And I want you to understand that the greatest miracle and the number one focus in God's heart in miracles is right relationship with him, that your sins be blotted out. The greatest gift he gave was his son to pay for your sins. Receive that gift. That's key in why miracles happen. It's key on several different levels. But because of this miracle with this lame man, Peter has now answered their question even before they asked, 
He's answered their questions that, hey, don't look at me. It was Jesus. Be converted. Your sins be blotted out. And then he says, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The times of refreshing, this is what's called as revival. Times of refreshing. Revival. What do we talk about with revival? What is revival about? It's about people coming to God. So what he's saying is, you know, don't be impressed by us, but recognize that it was Christ and repent, be converted, have your sins blotted out. So the, the time of revival will come. Why? Because of the presence of the Lord. What we've said about miracles is you have to have the presence of God. The presence of God is what leads to revival, which is what? The, the conversion, the blotting out of your sins, the giving your life to Christ. And, and when does that happen? Kind of interesting when we look at this. Verse uh, 18, it says, But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of his prophets, that Christ should suffer, and he hath so fulfilled. In other words, there was a time, fulfillment, there was a time, for Christ to come and fulfill the the prophecies, but also fulfill the the propitiation or the payment for your sin. It's also the idea of an influence. There's a there's a, an influential point. It's a, it's to accomplish, fulfill in time. Now let's look at this whole story for a minute. Where was uh, the beginning of this story? It was three o'clock in the afternoon. The time for prayer. What was going on? Well, this man was brought to the gate beautiful, which is what? The fulfillment of time. It's the time f uh, for things to come to fruition. And he asked for compassion. Peter speaks to him and says, hey, what you're asking for, I don't have, but you need to look at me because there's, there's something going to happen here. And he has an expectation that he's going to receive. And Peter has an expectation that he's going to be able to give him something. And so he tells him, wake up, stand up, walk show your ability to 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 um, stand and he's strengthened established and he does wake up and he starts leaping and praising god giving glory where it's supposed to go and the people see this and go what is going on and when they see that peter sees the opportunity to tell them get your life right with god too it's about blotting out sin it's all coming together in the right time. There's that fulfillment of time. And then he says, verse 26, Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, send him to bless you. And this idea of bless you is, again, it's tied to the idea of blotting out your sins. It's tied to the idea of setting you free from, from your sin. To bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. He spells it right out. To turn you away from those iniquities. You want to see miracles introduce people to God. You want to see miracles introduce people to a right relationship with God. <clears throat> God does miracles to prove that he's God. To prove that he loves you. To prove that he has power over those things that, that stop you. If if our relationship with God, if our Christianity is not based in being forgiven our sins, if, if we want to make it about something else, if we want to make it about a bigger bank account, it's just a cheesy scam. If a relationship with God can't fix what's wrong with you, What's the point? God wants to touch your life today. God wants to take the things that have, that have held you down and he wants to get those out of the way. He wants you to be able to, to have that right relationship, to have your sins blotted out, to, to be free from your iniquities. And the time is now. It's really simple. You know, there are people right now I know watching that are beginning to feel the Holy Spirit tug on their heart. They're beginning to feel that, and, and the, the resistance is already kicking in. Oh, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't know, maybe it's pizza. 
Maybe that's what my problem is. But it's not. It's God talking to you. It's his spirit drawing you, saying, you know what? Come, come over here and, and hear, hear a little something you need to hear. That's what it is. God wants a right relationship with you. He wants you to receive the gift that he has for you that will set you free from all those things that have been dragging you down. That's the true beginning of the miracle. Give your life to him because he gave his life for you. And when you do that, the first miracle is, is exactly that, freeing you from your sin. You don't have to live this way anymore. You don't have to be angry all the time anymore. You can have peace. You can have joy. You can have a smile. You don't have to worry about everyone else's things they put on you, expectations they put on you. So you can just turn to God and, and, and he will set your path straight. And that is, is it instantaneous? Yes and no. There's an instantaneous change. But we are creatures of habit. And we think of that oftentimes of habits like addictions or things like that. But creatures of habit, we get used to saying certain phrases. We get used to acting certain ways. We get used to dressing certain ways and doing things at certain times and all of those, those aspects of our life. Those are, those are habits that <clears throat> may change. But frequently, habits don't change instantaneously because we go back to it. It's why it's a habit. God wants to set you free from your sin. He wants to cleanse you and put you in a right relationship with him. And he wants to set your expectations so that you can receive from him those things that you need to get everything in life in order. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for your sins. You want an atmosphere for miracles? You need the presence of God. You need to be obedient to God. You need to have an expectation. And there needs to be a right relationship or the focus on a right relationship. That's why God does miracles. To restore that relationship. And again, the greatest miracle was his son, Jesus Christ, who died for you. And as you start telling your story, you'll become infectious. And that's it for today.